Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today in this video, as you guys know, the NBA draft is coming up very soon. So I want to rank the last 10 number one overall picks in the NBA draft and see, you know, whether it was just last year or it was 10 years ago, where are they at right now? Were they worth all the hype? Are they a great player? Could they have been better? Was it eh? Or are they a straight bus? So we'll see together. For more content like this, make sure to like the video. Let's hop right into it. So, we're going to start off with the 2023 number one overall pick, Victor Webanyama, who is easily the most hyped number one overall pick in recent history, probably since LeBron James. Um, his first season was outstanding. He definitely had a great case for Defensive Player of the Year, and he has the potential and the talent to honestly be the greatest defensive player of all time. That is a high, high trajectory. I mean, it take, it'll take a lot to get to that, but he has that ability. He has that potential. Right now, I'm going to say he's worth all of the hype. And now they say I'm a hater. He is definitely worth all the hype. We're going to put him all the way at the top. I'm looking at uh, Paolo Banquero. Um, he's definitely changed that Orlando team. The Orlando Magic. Now, people don't really talk about the Magic still, even though they made the playoffs. But the fact that they were able to take a, you know, a veteran Cleveland team to seven games, be very competitive. And he's the clear-cut number one player on that team. As a Rockets fan, it hurts a little bit. I do like Jabari Smith. He's a good player, but you know, I really wanted a guy to just take me there. And he looks like a guy who has the talent and the ability to take me there. Um, I'm putting him at great player. Like, you know, I think it's the thing about him. I don't even know what his hype was because he was supposed to be the third pick. So I'm gonna put you at great player worth all the hype is like, you're just, you're gonna lead, be like a main character, number one overall pick type of player. And not a lot of these guys are ever gonna be up there. Um, honestly, maybe Victor might be the only one, but I'm put you up there. Um, Cade, I'm gonna say could have been better. I'm gonna say could have been better. I could have said there's a there's an argument for eh, and the reason why there's an argument for eh is because Cade Cunningham he's in a bad situation in Detroit, right? So that's that's first and foremost he's not in a good situation. But at the same time, it's kind of like you know when he came out, he's supposed to be the Chris Paul. You know, Luka Doncic, you know, taller Chris Paul, Luka Doncic. Those were some of his comparisons. And, you know, obviously Detroit's not a good team. So you're not able really to see that. But honestly, it hasn't been much. I haven't seen much. There's nothing that stood out. And I don't watch Detroit Pistons basketball. So you Pistons fans can say, hey, this guy is really good here. He just needs this and that. But until he gets that, you know, he's a product of his environment. He's going to be, it's going to be tough. Anthony Edwards, I'm going to say worth all the hype. I'm putting you up there. I didn't expect Anthony Edwards to be at the top right there with Victor, right? With, with worth all the hype. I wouldn't have expected that when he first came out. I wouldn't have expected that in his first year. After his first year, I, he was he started off slow and he picked it up towards the end of the year. I don't know. When it comes to Anthony Edwards, what he's done the last couple years, you can really see that this guy has potential to be one of the main characters, one of the faces of the NBA. He has that dog in him. He has the passion. He has that mentality. And that's what we need to see. You know, people like he's the next Michael Jordan. I know that flame died down when he lost in five, but that's one of those things that you just have to learn. You know, you're learning. He's learning along the way. You know, he, what well, is his third year in the postseason? He got to the conference finals and now the next push is to try to get to the NBA finals. But Yo, he's he's a, he's a dope player. He's very marketable, and he's a guy that honestly he could be the face of the NBA. So we'll have to see if he lives up and continues to live up to his hype. But he's one of those guys that you have to look out for in the NBA because he he's he's a dope player. So I'm putting you at worth all the hype. Are y'all gonna like this one? I'm gonna say Zion, man, could have been better. Zion Williamson when he came out of college was easily one of the most hyped players. In the last 10 years prior i mean there's anthony davis trying, there's other players that were hyped up pretty high but zion was really up there he was a slam dunk he has to be number one overall pick. he was that type of player and the fact that new orleans hasn't made the second round he's been drafted since 2019 and they haven't even been to the second round with this guy and this guy has all this talent they made the playoffs i believe two or three times and you know he hasn't even participated in them because he's always injured you know, he had the problem with his weight, which was affecting him. So, you know, he's a guy with a lot of talent. He's a really, really good basketball player when he's on the court and it seems motivated. And he dropped 40 in that playing game against the Lakers. He just got injured. But his tenure in New Orleans doesn't seem like a guy who's going to stay there long. And it doesn't seem like a guy who, like you draft him number one overall, maybe still. 
because John Moran has his issues as well, but it's, it's not hitting. It's not, it's not really giving, you know? So I'm going to put you at could have been better. Uh, Deandre Ayton, man. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm put you at, eh. and I know we had a discussion saying this guy is a bust. I'm going to put you at, and eh. the only reason is because in that one run in that playoff run, he did do pretty well. He didn't do well in the finals, but he did pretty well when it came to, um, you know, they went to the, you know, the NBA finals and he had that game winner against the Clippers. So, but you know, the thing I'm, I'm curious with Deandre Ayton is like, what made him the number one overall pick? Like if you look at his scouting report, what was it that made them say, you know, Luka Doncic is on the board, Trey Young is available, but we like this Aiton guy. Because if you're a center and you're the number one overall pick, you have to have like, to me, I'm not picking no defensive centers. Like a, you could be elite Akeem Olajuwon level defensively. But number one overall pick to me, like you need offense. If you if you Akeem all defensively, but you mid or not good offensively, Bro, I mean, you can still pick a number one, but I'm looking at guys who are elite offense because it's not the era of the big man, especially at that time, at least. So DeAndre Ayton, what was it? Was he good offensively in college? Was he an offensive powerhouse in college? Because in the NBA, I haven't been seeing it. I don't know what he's done in Portland. He's probably not playing bad. It's just he's an oblivion. And I mean, obviously, if the Suns could redo this, you gotta look at these players. If they, if the team could redo this, what they would do it. If the Suns could redo this. They would do this a thousand times. They drive Luka Doncic every time, every week, every day, every minute. So that to me, I'm not gonna say bust, but it really could be a bust. Is a great, great, great uh, case for that. Markel Fultz is a bust. Um, he's playing well in Orlando, but for what he did in Philly, and it's not his fault. He got injured. He had shoulder problem or something, so he couldn't shoot the ball anymore like he was because his shoulder got messed up, and that's just unfortunate. What I remember about Markel Fultz, he's a day younger than me, and he was the first NBA player I knew who got drafted that was younger than me. And I'm like, bro, what am I doing? Why am I not in the league? Um, but, you know, I was rooting for Markel Fultz for that fact, but, you know, like I said, his shoulder got messed up, and since his shoulder's messed up, he was never able to live up to that potential that he saw in college, and that's honestly really sad because he was really good in college and I really wanted to see what that would look like in the NBA. But, you know, we never ever got a chance to see it and we never will. So that to me is definitely, uh, it's a bust, but it's tough. Um, ben Simmons, I'm putting you at bust as well. Ben Simmons, like, and the reason why I put him at bust is because the potential Ben Simmons possesses is so amazing that it's so sad that you'll never see it. It's almost similar to Markel, but just to an extra level because Ben Simmons was, is an elite playmaker. He was an elite defender, has elite height. Like he has all the things you want. You know, he's a very fast player too. Like he has all the things you want, right? The only thing he can't do is shoot. That was the only thing he couldn't do is shoot. And when his first rookie year, okay, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Well, you'll, you'll, and his rookie year wasn't even, like technically he didn't play his rookie year. So his second year, you know, he didn't want to work on that in his real rookie year. So his second year, he still didn't learn how to shoot. But, bro, my man, years go by and he's still not working on that part. Kobe Bryant said, bro, if he works on that part, he's going to be so dope. But he still wasn't working on that part of his game. And the fact that he wasn't working on that caught up to him when he had to play the Hawks in that second round. He was so terrible on the free throw line. And he was so, like, mentally shook that he didn't want to shoot at all. He didn't want to, like, even dunk. And that still affected his mentality years later. So you'll never see his potential because he needs one of those coaches, those mental coaches to get him to want to actually, you know, shoot the ball. And then you're going to see the highlights over the summer where he's shooting and you're like, oh my gosh, he's going to be different. And it's not because he's going to have some type of random injury and he's, or he's not going to shoot the ball. Ben Simmons is one of the big what ifs like this. Literally, he has all the potential in the world, but I guess he didn't have the work ethic. And this is an assumption, but he didn't have the work ethic or the drive to learn how to correct his one true weakness. And that's tough because he was shooting free throws worse than Shaq in the postseason. And that is a point guard. I know he's 6'10", but as a point guard, yeah, that's tough. Carl Anthony Towns, man, I'm going to say, man, I'll put you at could have been better, man. Like, I don't know. I say... Like he, he's a good, he's a really good player, but it's just like, I feel like with the number one overall pick, he was on such a dominant team in college. I just, you just expect a little more. Like he's been in the league like 10 years. 
think he's been to the postseason three or four times. He's in the he was Minnesota, so it makes I guess he's with Minnesota. But just like especially early on, like you say, oh, this guy is a dope player, and people were like, there was one point that was like, hey, this is the guy we want to start our team around over Giannis, LeBron, KD. This is the guy we want to start a team around. There was a, a you know NBA um executives whatever. There was a poll, and he, they said he want, we want to start a team with him. So you can see the potential, and I'm not saying he hasn't lived up to it, but it's just like you know there's supposed to be something better. Like it's supposed to be something better. Like he's good, but he's supposed to be up there. Way he's been, he was hyped. Like there should be Jokic, there should be Embiid, and Towns should be right. They should be all talking to each other, right? But he's just not. He's not there. He he didn't hit that. He didn't hit that part, and that's fine because he's had a good NBA career. But he did not hit what because if you're supposed to be better than Giannis. The exec said that you should you should be higher. So I'm put you. I could have been better. And Andrew Wiggins, I'm put you an A. Like I said, for the ants, you can definitely have a wonderful case for them being a bust. Um, Andrew Wiggins was pretty cool in Minnesota. I remember him, Towns, and Levine had like 20 each. I think maybe there were only three players at that age to do that. Something like that. Something cool like that. And you know, we were all hoping that those three would, you know, be the next Oklahoma City Thunder with KD, Kyrie, and I mean the KD, Westbrook, and Harden. But that never materialized. Andrew Wiggins did not live up to that hype in, you know, Minnesota. I mean, hey, for Cleveland, when they got Kevin Love, I guess, I mean, did Kevin Love even live to his hype? What, what was that trade? Did Kevin Love live to the hype? I mean, he helped them win the ring, but like he uh, he wasn't Kevin Love. He wasn't Minnesota Kevin Love, you know. But yeah, Andrew Wiggins, he went to Golden State, went with the main character, became very pivotal, different coaching, I guess, um, helped him out a lot. But in Minnesota, number one overall pick, he was in songs and stuff. I think Drake shot him out in his song. Like, you know, I you expect that Andrew Wiggins was supposed to be like that guy, and he wasn't. He didn't turn out to be that guy. Really, really good role player for the uh, Golden State Warriors, but he didn't turn out to be that guy, so... That's my ranking, man. So worth all the hype. Put Edwards and Webanyama, great player. Boncaro could have been better. Um, and you know, for these guys, you know, especially Cade, it's still young, so things can change. But Cade, Zion, and uh, Towns, eh, was uh, you know, I forgot my man's name. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins. You know, I'm forgetting it. DeAndre Aiden. I forgot his name because he's been disappointed, man. And the bus, you know, the 76ers boys. They were the bust, but this is my list. This is my ranking. Uh, for more content like this, make sure to like this video. We're going to do an NBA draft stream soon, so go ahead and check that out. We're so close to our goal of 1,000 subs, so give us a sub if you like this content. And before you go, make sure to check out this video. We go on TikTok, and all of the Celtics fans roast us to a crisp because of all our bad takes. I'm going to catch you guys on the next video, and I'm out of here. Peace.